Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video we did lunar stuff, so I think it's time to do crewed orbit. Uh, we have a uncrewed uh, test first, this is what this is asking for. And we need to reach, that surface velocity actually isn't fast enough, but okay. Uh, anyway, we'll reach a high surface velocity and come back down hopefully safely. And this is our goal first. So we will have a controller, a probe controller, on our crewed spacecraft, and we won't put crew in this time. Oh, no, orbital test flight on crewed is this one. Okay, so, hmm. Maybe this one we should use... Oh, we'll just test it twice. We'll just test it twice. Um, I, I, this one they were expecting a little um, re-entry capsule-like for the film canister, but I think testing it twice will be fine. The thing is, the Mark 1 pod takes 100,000 in order to unlock, so I'm going to time warp a little bit so that we get the funds. Okay, that's 100,000 with some buffer, and let's talk about our crew launcher. Okay, so I've called it Dionysus 1, and this is basically because of Hermes. Since they had a Hermes spacecraft, I decided to go with another Greek god, and I went with Dionysus, because Dionysus is fun, and uh, I like fun. So, uh, we have a parachute configured for two tons here, and the spacecraft is less than two tons without its service module. You can see 1.8 tons. Um, we've got a controller on here, avionics unit. This uh, is configured for three tons, that's so that I can deal with the service module. And it's got a little bit of extra EC power, and it's actually configured as a deep space one just in case. Um, we may or may not want that later, it might be for probes as well. And then we have an RCS section here for the re-entry RCS, and we've got probably too much of that. And then of course the Mark 1 pod, and I've just got whatever it put in there as far as life support equipment. No shielding yet, and it's got its own HTP. So we probably don't need this section, but I figured just in case. And then we have a service module, full featured, um, could do run... Uh, well, um, with these active, it could probably do a rendezvous and docking even, uh, if we had a docking port up there. And this is straight up HTP. So we're using a 3.6 kilonewton thruster, and I decided to go with a HTP one, even though it's not efficient, because we had plenty of space. Uh, we have, we don't really have high delta V requirements in low Earth orbit, and this allows us to use the same propellant for this engine as we do for the RCS thrusters. So in the, I don't think this can fail. I don't think it has a test flight configuration, but just in case. If something were to happen to it, we could use the RCS to deorbit. So I thought that was best. The solar panels are not meant to power this like permanently. We'll want the ones that fold out for that. Um, they're just meant to power it so that it can operate for a day. Uh, that's my goal so far. And of course, that's way beyond what we are being asked to do. Now, our crew rated pad has a minimum. It has a minimum of 345 tons. So, whether we need it or not, we're having the first stages of our Denib rocket here with the boosters, but not the, not the stage with the Gamma 2s. So, not the final stage. Everything else is on here, and we have the heavy controller as well, and we have three of the boosters, not four. That's one reason why we wanted to test that, because uh, you can see we're just above the 345 ton limit, bottom limit. So lots of delta V extra, and we'll see how it works out for us. I've extended the core a little bit so that the core outlasts the boosters, and we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, 5.7 seconds extra. Um, we may want to shut down the boosters early, and uh, given the thrust weight ratio right there, and uh, uh, we're, we're wishing it overall. Um, uh, what are we going to do about that, really? Um, especially the 13. We probably won't expend that stage. But, you know, because we got 10,668, we definitely won't expend it. But it's a little bit worrisome, isn't it? 
we'll, well, we're doing a test launch without a Kerbal. We'll see how it goes and then try to adjust. Maybe I'll actually only partly fuel this with the propellant for the Viking engine and then partly fuel it for Gamma 2s and have two Gamma 2s as well. That'd be complicated, but it's possible. It won't change the pad at all. It won't change the tank at all. It should change the tank, but they haven't come up with a way of catching me for that. So, maybe that'll be the solution. Then we can ignite the Gamma 2s on this stage instead of having a separate stage and it'll work out. So I'll think about that, but we'll see what kind of thrust weight ratio we have at the end. We'll build this first. So, uh, will it let me build it. First of all, tooling is just the fairings right here. And... 102,600 because of the little thruster as well. Okay. Oh, but it only took whatever it took. It didn't take 102,000. I don't understand anything. It's fine. It told me 102,000, but it didn't take it whatever. All right, let's build it. So, we need to um, train our Kerbal. Mark 1 cabin. Why... Oh, that's the crew cabin. What? Where's the Mark 1? I don't see the Mark 1 pod here. Is it just Mercury then? It doesn't tell me what kind of pod it is. It seems to have all the same stuff as Mercury. Well, I guess we'll train her for Mercury. I don't have any choice. Fine. 265 days though. I should have started that earlier. I think we need to hire another Kerbal too. Elfriede Meyer. I can call her Elf. That's a uh, bonus. Sebastian Ser Serrano. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't matter that they're a scientist, right? I guess we'll get Sebastian. And Paro Alonso sounds powerful. Nancy Faber sounds pretty straightforward, though. Okay, that'll be our three for now. We're finishing up early docking procedures. Maybe I should revamp my lunar lander with that. Let's see. Okay, so allow me to introduce the Looney 2. Uh, this is, well, what's actually going to land on the surface is this. We now have these little um, thrusters and they are running off of MHM Mon 3. So are the RCS ports, uh, ports MHM Mon 3. That is my mixture of choice going forward. And we are going to have these solar panels here. And if we turn off the avionics, shut down the avionics, you can see, oh, let's get active transmission time up here. You can see perpetual, we've got double the amount that we need as we normally would like. And so this is tech level 2. I don't know if tech level 3 is better, but um, for the moon, uh, for our purposes, we don't have that much science to transmit. It's just uh, to be safe. So anyway, we certainly have enough. Let's make sure to get the avionics back on. And that is five tons of avionics. So that's enough to control everything. And we're landing it on the surface. Okay, and then we have a one of these 2.2 slash 3.6 kilonewton thrusters, really, I guess, 3.6. MHM on 3, unlimited ignitions, lots of residuals, but uh, it'll be enough. So this will capture us into orbit. Well, maybe we'll capture, maybe we'll go straight down. It's got a seven minute burn time, so we have to watch out for that. And then two minutes with that, and then we land, hopefully. And solar panels, plenty of solar panels, plenty of RCS. The RCS is also MHM on 3. And that's a lot of thruster power. This, not so much thruster power. And it's a good question why. Um, okay. You know, when, when you think about it, this is the modular RCS, that's the modular RCS. They're both scaled 0.3 with the same three way symmetry, right? Right. Uh, this says thruster power 0.445. And I just put it on the MHM on 3 to add unlocked. Nothing else. And up here is the same scale. 
but it has a lower thruster power. I don't know why. <laughs> um, actually, uh, if it had the full thruster power like these do, we'd probably just be able to land with the RCS. Because it's the same, uh, these ones say that they have the same thruster power as those, right? Oh, so complicated. Anyway, we'll figure it out. That's why we're, uh, we'll, we'll test it and we'll see what happens. Uh, this stage is as before and should have enough to transfer us and the rest of the rocket is as before and should have enough to launch us to orbit. And that is what we're going to build. But unfortunately, it's at the same pad as our crewed mission. So, yeah, we'll have to wait. Well, as far as our other pad is concerned, we've got a Venus mission ready to go, but we have enough time. So I'm going to revamp that and put the new thrusters on that so that we have a more capable Venus mission and maybe we'd be able to do Venus orbit, but we can't pick up that contract yet. We have to do the flyby first. You know, the apoapsis is pretty generous. Even, yeah, I mean, that's pretty generous. Okay, so this will be Eve 1 on the Deneb rocket, and we are limited to 3.1 tons as before. Yeah, probably 3 tons would be better, but that means that after the rocket, we had 4,614 meters per second. That should be enough for the flyby. I don't know if it's going to be enough for orbit. We'll see if we can get into orbit. Uh, we'll test that. But all we really need is the flyby for this because we can't pick up the orbital contract. And uh, as far as science is concerned, we've got... Um, we, we should get a different mix. Let's get uh, the stuff that's going to take a while. I'll just send the early TV camera with it. Okay. So, 4,600, we've got decent solar panels, so I undersized them a little bit. And we have now the, whatever, 3.6 kilonewton thruster, I'll call it, and MHM on 3, MHM on 3 thrusters, and um, of course an MHM on 3 tank, and the controller that can control 3.1 tons, and then that antenna this time. Okay, so we'll build one of these at ELA-4. We've time warped through some construction, so we have some more budget, and I'm going to hire more researchers. Let's see. I'm going to hire the limit, and I'm going to hire all of them. All right. So we'll need another R&D building upgrade here in the dark night. Um, that will eventually cost 250000 so we're not doing that right now. That'll get us 1,600 researchers, but we'll leave that for now. And so, yeah research is underway and we are rolling out the Dionysus 1 prototype version okay recover flight empty no train crew well okay so is she still training or is that just not going to work out uh not completed yet so we don't know yet we don't know yet whether she's going to have that training as far as the others should we train for the same thing I mean, I guess there's no downside. Okay. Yes, launch without crew. All right. Well, who knows how this is going to go. SAS on, throttle is up. Ignition. And launch. Okay, we are past the speed of sound. We're actually going to cut there for G-forces. Separation. Separation. Though this is going to be worse for G-forces. No launch escape system. I thought about it. I want you to know that I thought about it. I also thought about having just the third stage on here. Just the Gamma 2 stage. But of course, that would be way below our pad limit. Our minimum pad limit. But that would be kinder for the thrust wave ratio. I think I'll do the mixed version though. The one with the 
Gamma 2s on here as well. Because this is too much. Alright, well, it's done. <laughs> uh, Max G's 10.5. Uh, it's not 17 anyway. Okay, separation. 500 meters per second. And while we're time warping, we're recharging. Of course, nighttime size is going to be a bit more of a problem and will drain. Pretty good though. It'll last for quite a while up here. We'll try and splash down in the Pacific close to South America. We got a line out to that Deneb G. That one's still working. I swear the ones at geostationary orbit never work out for us, but the closer in ones do. Just need to return home safely. Okay, ignition. First time firing this engine. I'm going to arm the parachute. This was a mercury rated heat shield, so I made it just slightly bigger than the pod, so it's actually 2.1 meters instead of 2. Okay, that'll be enough. And separation, I think? Yeah. Okay, we have encountered the atmosphere. Okay, lots of puffing, but no problems. We're starting to get heat effects here. That'll take us out of fizz warp. We're currently here-ish, so not quite there. There's Keto. But I wanted to splash down in daylight anyway. Lots of charred blader. As expected, we have plenty of RCS, but we'll be potentially using that for other purposes as well. We'll activate these top ones for docking. Still got comms. Um, through a uh, satellite overhead, that DenMG. Really helpful DenMG, that one. Okay, splash down and recover. Um, recover to VAB, I guess. Alright, so that was a success, but we really, really need to limit G-forces, so let me actually edit this one under construction. Okay, so I have added two Gamma 2s here, even though it looks ridiculous because they're really small. If they torch the center engine, that's fine because, well, it'll be shut off and done for by that point anyway. Um, we will also shut down the boosters here and separate them uh, when we get to a uh, thrust weight ratio of 6. So then that'll solve that problem, hopefully. We still need the same pad mass, right? We need 345 tons. So, yeah, well, it'll be redundancy, sort of. And so, yeah, we'll shut this off and turn those on at the appropriate time. And then that'll be that. So, that's the plan. And this is the one I'm editing, so this one will fulfill the uncrewed one still. We need to do another test, and then we'll put crew on. Uh, the potential crew is still training up anyway. Okay, so this is an EVE-0. We are at the Venus window, and we are going to launch it over to Venus. And the EVE-0 doesn't have the MHMON-3. The EVE-1 does. We'll launch that next. And hopefully the EVE-1 might be able to capture into orbit. This, of course, is exactly the same as the ones that we had sent before that did manage to get close enough for the flyby. So hopefully that'll be fine. Well, we just need to fly by within 20,000 kilometers and transmit some scientific data. So, with that being said, SAS is on, throttle up, and ignition. We just need to go straight out and launch. We're past the speed of sound. Okay, separation and ignition. Boo! Bearings. And third stage. Ooh. 
Oop, a little bit early. Okay, barely safe. All right, I seem to have messed up the timing on this one because, uh, well, this time I didn't take as much pain to line up with the system as I did on the previous attempts with the Venus probes. And we do not have enough delta V from this current orbit. We need it to line up a little bit better. Uh, we'll just have it go on its way and then we'll launch the next one and hopefully that one will work. But this one is probably not going to make it. Our ability to maintain a signal seems to be intermittent. Deneb G is flashing on and off, basically. But we should be able to connect through Ascension close to the node. Okay, going. Not going. Throwing the RCS on. Trying our best. Okay. Well, continuing. You know what? This might be the last use of the Agena D secondary propulsion system, considering the unlocking of the MHM on three thrusters. So, what I'm going to do is see how long it can go for without shutting it down. We're definitely not going to make it, so... Well, they both appear to have uh, lasted through the full burn time. 311 seconds, or 5 minutes and 11 seconds. So, yeah. And actually, the mean time between failures uh, hit a bottom at 38.57 minutes. But we don't have enough. We could use the RCS for a little bit more, but not much. Uh, we'll just point at the sun and let it continue on its way. Next one I'll try to be a little bit more careful with as far as when we launch. Okay, it's recharging. I mean, I don't know what it's going to do, but it's got to be out there. Okay, back to Space Center. Okay, hopefully we are in a better situation, but it's tough to say. Uh, on the bright side, we have 4,800 meters per second. Uh, thanks to the MHM Mon 3 up there. So even if we had the same situation as the previous probe did, we should be able to at least get there, uh, though we wouldn't be able to capture into orbit. So yeah, uh, this should work out, assuming nothing weird happens. Uh, so throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. All right, looking good. And staging. Bearings. And third stage. No problems. We seem to be able to make orbit. And shut down. 220 by 190. Alright. Well, let's just get rid of that stage. And see if we can get to Venus. Well, we'll approach a little bit polar. And this time it's definitely better than the previous time. But um, still not great. Not compared to the previous transfer opportunity. Oops, I missed that. Wanted to see how much it would take to capture. Yeah, this time it's not great for capturing compared to the previous time. We would need 2,000, so that's not an option. We will just do the flyby, and we'll have to optimize a little bit better if we want to capture. After all, we only asked Transfer Window Planner for the transfer window for a flyby, not for a capture, so it was probably a different optimal time for that anyway. We don't have any ground stations around. It's just a matter of Deneb G's benevolence at this point, but at least it seems to be more constant than the previous one. I don't know what was up with the other one. 
so hopefully you'll be okay. And let's go. Okay, staging. Very vigorous. Oh, we have spotty comms. It just dropped out on us. Um, come on, Denebg. We might need to just decommission all the old ones. We'll wait until a solar panel upgrade, of course. Oh, we have a direct line to Brownsville. That's a stretch, though. Okay, we'll correct the rest at a mid-course adjustment. Okay, well, it's going to cost a huge chunk of our remaining Delta V at the mid-course adjustment for some reason. Probably it'd be much more efficient to do it here, but we have the Delta V, so it'll give us a reason to pay attention to it. And we're going to do that. We are going to do that node, even though it costs quite a lot. We will start all the things just in case. Probably these have been done around the sun, though. I suppose I don't have to deactivate the avionics, but like, you know, just in case. All right, so we have a probe on our way to, on the way to Venus. Um, yeah, got to work on that if we want to get a Venus orbiter, though, so. But we have plenty of opportunities for that, and we could use the larger launcher, I mean, the Deneb with the boosters, if we really need to, but we probably shouldn't need to. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.